page 1 of the Merchant Processing Application and Agreement. Please print clearly in order to avoid issues for your merchant down the road. It is imperative that we can read all information clearly. Please print your name on the top line and sign right below. Your sales ID will be issued to you upon your first submission. The merchant DBA name or doing business as should be the name of the business as it might show on the outside of their building. The business address is the actual physical address, city, state, zip, phone number, fax number, and email address are important fields. Website is important if they are processing online. Customer for service telephone number and customer service email address are optional. For the legal name, that would be the name of their business as it appears on their tax return. So if it's incorporated, it should say Inc. If it's a sole proprietorship, it may have the merchant's first and last name, such as Bob Smith. Billing address, if it's different than the location's physical address, say maybe a P.O. box, that goes on this right side. City, state, zip, contact name, fax, phone number. Retrieval requests and merchants monthly statements will go to the corporate location unless you mark otherwise here. If it was a sole proprietorship as above, for instance Bob Smith, you mark this box here. Corporation, medical or legal, tax exempt. If it is a tax exempt organization such as a 501c3, we will need a letter verifying that they are tax exempt from the government. International organization, association, government, LLC, or partnership. Only one of these boxes will be marked. Name as it appears on your tax return. That should match the client's legal name above. The federal tax ID is nine digits long. Uh, it may be a social security number if registered under a sole proprietorship. Otherwise, everyone has a tax ID and then mark if they are a foreign entity or non-resident alien here. It's important to note that the federal tax ID and the legal name must match each other as per the IRS website. Many applications are pended or put on hold because the legal name is not written exactly as it would appear on the tax return. Or maybe a tax ID has one digit wrong Either of those can pend a file, so be clear on that. Here you'll write in the detailed explanation of the type of merchandise, products, or services sold. Uh, we need a general description, not too detailed. This description here is a perfect example. Section 2 includes a site survey, which means that someone has actually visited the site and made notes as to uh, the physical location. So make sure and mark every answer. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory here. Refund policy advertising methods. Up here, if you have your, if they currently process and are switching over to our processing, you want to put their existing processor's name here and the reason for leaving. This is important because it shows first data that they have been processing and that creates some stability. Mail, telephone, order, business to business, or internet information. Please complete this section. Don't skip it. We need to know who they're selling to and, and what percentage, especially Number three, what is the time frame? Generally, this will be 100%, zero to seven days. Uh, and number four, generally, sales are deposited at the date of order, but maybe they're ordering something ahead of time and the card isn't charged until the date of delivery. Then you mark here. Who performs the product fulfillment? Generally, it's direct. Uh, if it's a third-party vendor, please include information here. And number six gets missed often, uh, just because it's small and at the bottom of the page. Does any of your cardholder billing involve automatic renewals or recurring transactions? Yes or no. 
page two of the processing agreement. DBA name goes at the top. This field gets missed quite often as well, the date the business started. We need at least a month and a year here. Prior bankruptcies, yes or no, personal or business. This section, trade reference one and two, is not required. Number four, owners, partners, or officers. We need at least 51% ownership to sign the application and complete their personal information. For instance, if John Smith only owned 49%, then we need an additional owner to sign who owns at least 2%. Here, John Smith is 100% owner. He's the CEO. We have his home address. All of this is required. Social security number is required. However, there are alternative documents that can be provided if the merchant refuses to provide the social security number. Please ask for a list of those documents. Date of birth and driver's license. The date of birth and driver's license are not required. However, they are helpful, especially if any collection efforts need to go on. Settlement information is the bank that they want their credit card sales deposited to. You can either fill in this information or you can write in here voided check attached or C check attached, something along those lines. Equipment third party information. Generally, you'll be marking Omaha as the network front end. If your merchant has a VAR or other type of terminal that may not be supported on Omaha, we'll let you know that and we'll choose the alternate front end instead. For now, mark Omaha. Do you use any third party to store or process information? Yes or no? Please identify any software. Okay, so software goes here. Internet gateways go here. PC internet, terminal, printer. Pin. Most times you'll only have a terminal model listed here and the quantity. If they're leasing, you'll fill in this information here. If not, leave it blank. Number seven, grid information. You can leave all of that blank and skip that whole section. Section eight, transaction information. It's important that we have a good idea of their estimated volume. This line includes cash, credit, debit, and check cards for the year. This line includes MasterCard and Visa only, Discover, and American Express. If they've never processed before, try to get as close as possible. Are they seasonal, yes or no? And if so, which are their high months? Average Visa MasterCard network ticket. So what is their average ticket, $50? Generally, that's the same for American Express. What's their highest ticket that they might see in a week or a month? And then the percentage of how the transactions are taken. For the most part, maybe 90, 95% will be swiped at your general store locations and maybe 5% taken over the phone. If it's completely internet, it'll be 100% internet here. Just make sure these are completed and make sure they add up to 100%. Page three, DBA name goes at the top. Auth fees, authorization and capture fees go here, MasterCard and Visa, and Discover. If they want to take American Express, you mark either American Express one point and we will get an account for them or if they have an existing account they choose to keep you mark American Express ESA pass through if they have an existing account number write it in here SE number if not mark the one point and we'll get them one instead either way it's critical that you have an authorization or per item fee to cover your costs if they do want to take American Express JCB um, is generally not used. You'll know if you need to add that. These fields here are automatically populated for you. Please talk to your manager if you need to change those in any way. Dues and assessments should be checked mark always. 
chargeback fee. These are general fees and rates that we might see on a standard application. You're welcome to use these or talk to your agent or use the statement comparison that's been given to you to fill in these fields. Sales transaction fee. Generally they won't have a sales transaction fee if they have authorization fees up here. Usually they'll have one or the other. This sales transaction fee is charged on settled transactions. Authorization fees are charged on every transaction. Batch fee, application fee, EBT or food stamps per item and account number if applicable, EBT cash benefits, other. The other section is what you would use if you needed us to charge for equipment that was not being leased on page two. Annual fee, notes, MasterCard, other item rate, generally this is left blank, minimum monthly fee, monthly statement fee, other item rates are generally left blank, and then all of these are pre-checked for you. Over on your right side you'll see uh, other monthly fees so if you have a wireless machine for your merchant you're going to need a wireless fee here um, e-merchant view access etc you can also write in your equipment here rather than other it's up to you PCI annual fee PCI non-compliance fee go here for this section if you mark any of these check boxes, that will be the only thing that your merchant is allowed to accept. So if you leave all of those unchecked, they will be assumed to accept all types of cards that have an authorization fee. Discount is collected generally monthly. That's, that means that their fees are taken out of their checking account on a monthly basis. Some merchants once in a while will ask for it to be taken out on a daily basis. That's where you would mark that if they choose that option. If your merchant is going to be priced on a three-tiered system, the, this is where your rates will go here, and it'll look just like this. These NA fields need to stay blank, and the tiers need to be entered accordingly, as you'll see here. Visa, Visa Signature Debit, Discover, and discover signature debit. Make sure you have three tiers for each type of category. Three, 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 and three. Generally we don't use the ERR. Talk to your sales agent if you believe that your merchant requires that type of pricing. If they prefer pass-through interchange and that is the way that you'll be pricing them, then you would not fill in any tiered rates above. You would only fill in your discount rates here one, two, three, four, five, six times. That's it. Nothing over here, nothing over here. Pin based debit, do they want to take transactions with the customer entering their pin number? Then you'll mark this box and have a per item right here. American Express one point as we discussed above the authorization fields are above the pricing on the rate per item are on a separate pricing sheet established by American Express we can get that to you if you don't have it make sure that you mark retail for retail accounts restaurant for restaurant accounts and put in the appropriate pricing uh, as this can also hold up your application page 3 is basically your signature page Every signer that was necessary on page two needs to sign. So if two uh, members were signed up, then we need two signatures here and at least one signature in the personal guarantee. That covers everything on the Merchant Processing Agreement. Don't forget to get the program guide signed, which is the 39-page program terms and conditions. The final page needs to be included with your application and voided check. This is what that page looks like. You can skip the top section here, print their legal name here, and have them sign and date here.